I saw a lot of people recommending NVIDIA GPUs over AMD when it comes to ray tracing. So let's see if AMD cards can do ray tracing and compare the 7900 XTX to the 4080 in games. I will be analyzing the power draw from the wall as well. For testing I have bought the Gigabyte Aorus RX 7900 XTX Elite, a GPU equipped with vapor chamber cooling solution that is designed to use more power than the other entry level cards, so that means over 350 watts closer to 400. Let's not lose any more time and first let's check some games and see how the car performs in ray tracing and pit it against the 4080. Both cards are tweaked but I show the settings later in the video. So let's see some results. The first game that I checked is The Last of Us Part 1 using max settings with motion blur disabled at 1440p without upscaling. The average results are taken from free runs after a few 3D mark benchmarks used to warm up the cards. Looking at the results, the 4080 enjoys a small lead with averages of 131.2 frames and 109.11% low loss compared to the 7900 XTX 114.3 and 94.11% lows, which translates to a lead of over 10%. Both cars deliver smooth frame rate at this resolution when using ray tracing. When it comes to Guardians of the Galaxy, I use the internal benchmark to see the performance difference between the two cards. The benchmark runs exhibit a bit of stutters and because of this, the 1% lows results are so close. The 4080 enjoys a lead of more than 20%, at least when it comes to the average, at around 122.8, while the 7900 XTX hovers around 98 with 74.61% lows. The 4080 has 1% lows of around 79.1, really close to the AMD card. These are the graphic settings used to test both cards in Spider-Man. The run consists of web slinging from Fisk Tower to the same building three times. Looking at the results, the cards are neck and neck. The 4080 has a less than 2% advantage here with 117.9 and 75.9 against the 7900 XTX results of 114 and 73.7. For the Metro Exodus and Haste Edition result, I used the internal benchmark tool to compare the two cars with everything maxed out. The 4080 enjoys a 15% advantage here when it comes to the averages with 85.6 against 76 for the AMD card. When it comes to the 1% lows, the 4080 leads with 58.5 against 54.1. Resident Evil 4 Remake is a game that was bundled with AMD cards like The Last of Us Part 1, so I expect them to perform quite well here. Like in The Last of Us Part 1, the 4080 is a bit ahead of the 7900 XTX with 158.9 and 134.9 compared to 150.9 and 124.8. Hogwarts Legacy is still unoptimized and this will be reflected in the 1% lows for both cards. This game will benefit from upscaling in order to have better low results. Again, we see the 4080 ahead enjoying a 15% lead with 17.9 averages and 1% lows of 30.6 compared to 7900 XTX 60.6 and 27.1. When it comes to the Callisto protocol, I'm including the graphic settings as I apply them and do a test run. I'm doing this because with the latest patch the performance has increased by a big margin, more than double. Now, the game runs with frame rates ranging from above 100 to above 200, as you can be seen on the screen. This is a welcome improvement, but this game would have needed this from the start. Now, the game seems a decent buy, given the performance uplift and the price discount compared to when it was launched. To be frank, I haven't played the game since I finished it 6 months ago, so I'm not sure if they fixed the stuttering issues. The game averages at 240.3 frames on the 4080, while the 7900 XTX hovers around 230. 131.2. What is concerning is the huge difference when looking at the 1% lows, with 120 for the 4080 and 93.6 for the 7900 XTX. Let's now move to Star Wars Jedi Survivor. This game was bundled as well with AMD cards and it has only FSR, which works on all cards. The game is known to use a lot of VRAM, but both cards have plenty, so no issue here. In some areas, Jedi Survivor is a game played by starters, as well as being a CPU intensive game, with both cards not being able to be 100% utilized all the time, thus having pretty bad 1% lows even with top-end hardware. These cards are evenly matched, with 1% lows close to 40 
49 frames per second for both cards and the average is close to 90 with the 4080 having 91.7 while the 7900 XTX has 88.6. A Plague's Tale is an Nvidia title, it has only DLSS implemented and for some time it has added ray traced shadows. The 4080 enjoys a big lead here with averages of 93.3 against 75.1 frames per second for the AMD card while the 1% lows are around 71 compared to 7900 XTX 52.2. I had a big stutter in one run for the 7900 XTX, this is why the 1% lows are a bit lower. When testing Hitman 3, I used its internal benchmarking tool with max setting using the Dubai demo. I used this one instead of the other as I think it has more ray tracing areas that can showcase the performance when using it on both cards. Looking at the results, the 7900 XTX is no sludge delivering good frame rates, but it's bested by the 4080. The 4080 delivers 130.1 averages while the 7900 XTX is hovering around 111.2. There is a big difference between these cards when looking at the 1% lows with 97 for the 4080 against 68.5 for the 7900 XTX card. Both cards deliver good frame rates, well over 60 and that is important for this type of game. Dying Light 2 is probably one of the most demanding ray tracing games out there. I'm using the opening scene to measure the performance of both cards. This game is probably one of a few out there where ray tracing brings nice image improvements, at least in some areas. Looking at the results for Dying Light 2, both cars need upscaling for smooth playthrough, but the 4080 pulls ahead with averages of 66.1 and 1% lows of 50.7 frames per second, while the 7900 XTX has averages below 60 at 57.4 with 1% lows of 40.5. This game requires pretty good hardware in in order to be playable at 1440p when maxing out the visuals and the opening scene is not so demanding when it comes to ray tracing so expect tips below what are reported for these cards. Moving on to a less demanding game and that is Gotham Knights. The cards deliver high frame rates, but this is the first game where we see the 7900 XTX matching the 4080 and providing better 1% lows by a really small margin. Both cards are basically tied when it comes to the averages, with a frame rate of 160, with the 7900 XTX pulling ahead when it comes to the 1% lows at 119.2, while the 4080 delivered 116.7. The game runs well and maxing it out, at least on this hardware, the frame rates still sit above 100. When looking at the results for Returnal, the 4080 pulls ahead with averages of 109.9 and 1% lows of 73.9 while the 7900 XTX card delivered averages of 98.9 with 1% lows of 71.1. Moving on to control, the averages are almost identical with 103.8 for the 4080 and 101.3 for the 7900 XTX. The Nvidia card delivers marginally better 1% lows of 94 frames compared to 88.8 .8 delivered by the AMD card. I was expecting the 7900 XTX to trail the 4080 by a big margin in control as this game was released to showcase the ray tracing capabilities of the 2000 series thus being developed with Nvidia cards in mind. At that time, AMD didn't have any card that could do ray tracing as the 5000 series didn't have any hardware capabilities for it. Dead Space Remake is a game that has ray traced ambient occlusion and in this game, the 7900 XTX pulls ahead and not by 1 or 2%. I know that Nvidia has enabled rebar for this game, so this is not the reason the AMD card outperformed. This game still suffers from occasional status and this impacted the results for the 1% lows. As it can be seen in the chart, the AMD card delivers 154.8 when it comes to the averages, while the 4080 achieved 136.8 frames per second. Here, the AMD card enjoys a 14% lead, and this translates as well to the 1% low value, with the 7900 XTX hovering at 60.3, while the 4080 was sitting at 53.3 frames per second. Another game that was created to showcase the retracing capabilities of the Nvidia cards is Cyberpunk 2077. In this game, the 4080 enjoys the biggest performance gap, at least when it comes to percentage-wise. If enabling overdrive, both cards are unusable, but the 7900 XTX delivers a slideshow, while the 4080 is able to almost deliver a console-like experience. 
Looking at the chart, we can see that the 4080 has a lead of around 50% when it comes to the averages and the 1% lows. The Nvidia card delivers averages of 55.2 frames with 1% lows of 45.3, while the AMD card has an average frame rate below the 1% low value of the Nvidia card at 38.7 with 1% lows of 30.7. The last game that I checked is for Spoken, and in this one, the cards are tied at a bit above 100 frames. Adding the results from all the games, we see that the Nvidia card pulls ahead when using ray tracing, and that is no surprise to anyone. To me, it looks like the 17900 XTX is quite close to the 4080, and that is a bit unexpected. There are a few games where the 4080 leads by a big margin, but most are putting the 79 XTX not far behind. The 4080 has averaged at 116.2, with the 1% low sitting at 78.7 frames, while the 7900 XTX managed an average of 107.9 and a 1% low of 70 across all 17 games. This translates to roughly 10% performance advantage when enabling ray tracing for the Nvidia card. When it comes to power consumption, I will show the power pull from the wall without the displays. I have a big quiet 150 watt platinum PSU with a maximum efficiency of 94% and it can handle a peak power of 920 watts, anything above that will make the PC restart or turn off. Now to explain a bit what the power efficiency means. Imagine that we have from 0 to 920 a power efficiency of 94%. That means that if all of the components in the PC consume 94 watts, it will pull from the wall 100 watts. This is what the efficiency of a PCU means. To give a few more examples, if the PC requires 564 watts, it will pull from the wall 600, and if it needs 376, it will pull from the wall 400. Let's check power consumptions. These are the two displays that I use. One has 165 Hz, and the other one has 180, both being 1440p. When checking the power consumption at either with a single monitor, there is no difference between the two cards. When using the two high refresh displays, the AMD card pulls 155 watts, while the Nvidia card consumes less, with the PC pulling from the wall 110. With the previous AMD driver, the PC pulled 170 watts. It seems that the Nvidia card is a bit more power efficient when using two high refresh displays. Now let's have a look in games. First, I will show the power consumption display by MSI Afterburner in control. What you see on the screen, this is stock settings, no tuning. As the model is not an entry level 7900 XTX, it has a power allowance of 410, compared to the made by AMD GPUs that have 355 watts. And this is the power consumption for the 4080, without undervolting, sitting at above 310 watts. This GPU has a max allowed power of 320 watts. Again, the Nvidia card is a bit more efficient. Now, let me show you the tune settings for the 7900 XTX that I use for testing. What you see here, I set it up after watching the video from YouTube channel Ancient Gameplays regarding how to undervolt the card. Let me show you the power usage when increasing the max power allowed by 5%. The GPU consumes close to 430 watts. No coin whine can be heard when using this much power. Let's set the max power allowed to 15%. And now the card consumes a bit of above 460 watts. And again, no coil whine. This 7900 XTX can consume a lot of power, but this 15% increase doesn't translate to a performance uplift of 15%. When undervolting the 4080, and this is the setting used in the benchmarks, the GPU doesn't consume close to 320 watts. It sits around the 280 mark. The 4080 is a more efficient GPU, and that is partially because it is built on a more advanced processing node than the 7900 XTX. And this is the power pull from the wall using the 4080 in the left and the 7900 XTX in the right in a game that pushes both GPUs to the max when tuned. Both GPUs produce great frames per second, but the 4080 requires less power in doing so, especially when undervolting. As we just saw, the Gigabyte Aorus 7900 XTX Elite is a beast of a card. It performs well when pitted against the 4080, it is cheaper than any 4080, at least here in Spain, as I paid for it 1069 euros and its cooling solution is great and silent, at least in a case with other running fans. I don't have coil wine on my unit, but this is a lottery, as both Nvidia and AMD cards exhibit this issue. 
if you have a decent PSU and you don't care that much about ray tracing and power usage, the 7900XTX is amazing. I would recommend to go for a cheaper version and tune it if needed as this is a bit on the expensive side. The card will not disappoint in ray tracing games or in the ones from CD Projekt like Cyberpunk and Witcher 3 Remastered. I think these two games are designed with Nvidia cards in mind. In the other games, due to the nature of ray tracing implementation, the card performs well. I was pleasantly surprised that the card performed so well in Control, a game that was designed with NVIDIA 2000 series in mind, but maybe AMD optimized the drivers. When using the card I didn't encounter errors, driver crashing, but I disabled AMD overlay and any software as I do the same with NVIDIA. I only had issues when tuning the card using MSI Afterburner, but after using Adrenaline and disabling uh, tuning in MSI Afterburner, I didn't have any issue anymore. Is the GPU better than the 4080? In my opinion, no, but it's a cheaper viable option that can be taken into consideration. And if using large ray tracing, it can be up there with the 4080 at a lower price, often winning by a small margin in pure raster games. And that's it for this video. If you liked the video, please subscribe to the channel, hit the like button and leave a comment below as it will help bring visibility to the video and the channel. Thanks for watching and hope to see all of you in the next one.